Hey everybody, we're going to continue on with our series. My name is Jamie and we're doing a 2D uh, JavaScript programming of a tile-based game. Following along with a guy named Coden Moore, you can find uh, links in the first video and such. Um, but he basically is creating his in Java. We're doing JavaScript. So what we, uh, in our last video, we were able to create some images and put them on the screen. So I created the uh, assets in the game class. I moved them back into the assets class. That's all that I really did here. And one thing that I did is I set the uh, asset up with a width and a height of the individual um, pieces or the tile size of my image. And that just so happens to be 28 by 42. Um, and uh, this, you know, we're doing a little character right now, um, but eventually what we would probably do is actually just do tiles. So that's what Code and More does. Um, and I will change these to tiles, um, but for now I just wanted to get a picture on the screen. Um, and what I did is I created a, a um, property called idle within the asset and set it to a cropped section. And then in our game, all I have did here is I set the uh, idle to assets dot get asset Mario and then dot idle um, and then we've drawn the idle with the my drive function on 2020 so that's 20 pixels to the right 20 down and then we also get his width and his height that we set um, there so that we can get the size that we want him to be drawn at so now when we come to the screen you can see that he's still uh, we still have our character here and he's at the right size and everything's all good to go. So now what I want to work on is um, our states. So in Coden Moore's video he does explaining about states but uh, and he, he does a really good job but I'm just going to briefly explain. A state is just essentially which section of our overall game we're currently going to display to the player. So when we first get started we would start up with a menu state um, and that's going to have some buttons on it like play game or settings. Then we would have a setting state which allows the, the player to change things like the frames per second or um, if the music is on or you know things like that. So so we'll have two states there and then we'll have our actual game state which is the state that runs the, the game. Um, so we're going to get started on that right now. So the first thing that we need to do is come into our classes, create a new folder which is going to be considered a package and this will be states. Alright, and we're going to create the state class here. So create a JavaScript file called state and in here we're going to define it just like we do. We're going to import the class library pass in class which will give us what the class library returns and we'll have access to it. Then we're going to create a variable called current state. We're going to set it equal to null. So this will store what the current state is. Now Code More has a thing called an abstract class in Java and that is essentially a class that you cannot create an instance of directly but you would have to create in a uh, class that inherits this state and then we can we can actually make instances of that that class. So our game class, our settings, our game state, our setting state, our menu state, we'd be able to create instances of, but we shouldn't create a direct instance of the state class. Unfortunately there's no abstract classes here in JavaScript, so what we'll do is we'll create some of the functions that we need here so that we can come back to this state in reference and make sure that we have everything in our game state that's needed. So first thing that we'll have is a a function uh, called tick oops tick and that will take in delta time and a function oops we don't need the bar here state dot prototype dot render and that's going to take in a graphics object all right um, so in his he just you know basically all he needed in the class was this stuff here 
Um, but we're going to create the state as a class like so, passing in the object that has our constructor. All right, and uh, that should be fine here. The other things that we're going to create are some static methods. So we will have, uh, and actually I don't think for now, yeah, we'll leave it like this for now, um, but we do need some static methods. So we want a state.getState. And that's equal to a function that returns the current state. So uh, return current state. Easy as that. And we'll also have state dot set state. And we will pass in a state. So I'll put an underscore for our G here. And we will say current state is equal to underscore state. So the cool thing is when we when we do this oops, state with a capital S, when we create a function like this where it's just state oops, state dot get state. What we've created is a static method, something that we can use anywhere that we require the state class. So if we're in any function and we put up here in the uh, required um, required uh, classes or modules, if we have state up there, we can actually call without without creating any instances of anything. We can just say state dot get state, and then we'll get these functions or set state. And we'll be using that momentarily. So that the cool thing about that is anywhere that you include the state class, you have access to these two files, regardless of creating an instance of of a class or not. As long as it's state dot something, that's how it works. So that same thing is being utilized here in assets. So assets dot default width. This just means it's a static variable that we're able to access anywhere we load in the assets class. All right, so from here, now what we're going to do is create a, um, an actual state. Um, so the tick and the render are just here to let us know that we need to have a tick and a render in our class. So I'm going to copy these right now, just preemptively, and we will put them in our state. So first thing here to do is create a new class within the states called uh, game state and we will define like normal we will require state and pass that in here as state so we can access what the state class returns which what does it return nothing at the moment so we we do have to return state now we'll have access to everything we've put in here so we go back to game state and we can start building uh, the general game state. So first thing in the game state that we need, we will say var game state is equal to state dot extend, passing in the constructor. And it currently doesn't take any parameters, but we can call the super method so that we can actually call the um, the constructor of the state class, which doesn't do anything, doesn't take anything right now, but it will in the future. So we'll throw that in there now. Uh, I don't think we've used this yet. So essentially, when you're inside of your constructor um, for a new class and you call the underscore super, what that does is it goes to our state, our base state class, and runs its constructor as well, passing in whatever we throw in the super. That's what's cool about that, that uh, class library we downloaded. It already has all that stuff built in, so we can do these things easy. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paste those in and change this from state and add the word game in front of it, like so. And now we have a tick and a render for our game state. Now that is awesome. So we can 
now throw in from our game state we'll just grab this line here we'll copy this well actually we'll pull that out and pull this out for now and throw them right into our game state so throw the idle up there and render here so one thing too because we are just doing this temporarily just to save some space so I only have to get rid of one line later I'm gonna replace idle with the full path the full um, way of getting it so assets dot get assets so one thing that you can see is asset is white that means we have to import that to be able to use it so I will now do that so assets and then we will pass that in as assets so we have access to it and now this should be fine to accept assets um, and now that there is no assets in the game dot j uh, the game class I'm going to remove that now we may end up putting it back later but why have something that we're not using in there all right back in our game state here we have this tick and we have uh, this render but they're not doing anything because we aren't calling them anywhere so we have to go back to our regular game class and create a few things so we will go to let me pull up my reference real quick and we'll create var game state and I'm just going to throw in menu state and settings state just like what I was talking about now we're only going to right now throw in the game state but we'll have those in ready to go when we need them so in the in the initialize function we will come down to initialize and underneath the display actually we can put this underneath both of these we're going to say game state is equal to a new state and we we've got that oh sorry it's equal to a new game state and notice we haven't created or we haven't included the game state yet so we have to come up here and say game state and game state so that is a little bit different I believe all he had to do is uh, import state and he had access to game state I'm, uh, but with us we have to just pull in the, the exact states that we're wanting to use so it's equal to a new game state uh, so it's red and it's that means it's ready to go now the other thing we can do is we can come down here Uh, actually we're gonna go right underneath it and we'll say oh we do need to include state as well so we'll say state here and state there and the reason for this is that we have access to those static methods so I will come right below it and say state dot set state equal to game state in our tick we can now go if state dot get state is oops, is not equal to null so that means that if we have a state set we can tick it so we'll say state dot get state dot tick passing in delta time and the same thing can be done here oops in our render function so underneath the clear rectangle we will come here and say render passing in G so we're passing in the G so that we have access to the tool brush so we can start writing uh, start drawing and stuff in our state so in the game state we have a render and a tick 
and in the render currently we just have some temporary code to render Mario to the screen. Um, so let's see what happens now and what kind of errors I probably got. Alright, so I may not... Oh, you know what? I know exactly what we need to do. We need to come into our app.js and state comes after sprite and apps app slash classes slash states slash state and then the other one we have is our game uh, game state so we'll come here app slash classes slash game state put a comma there all right let's see what errors we have and we're still having problems game state must not have been I just didn't put the right path we forgot to say states here all right and game state is not a function again I probably like I love to do forgot to return return game state that's another thing we have to return in order to have access to what we've um, created in the definition mod of the module. So right now it looks like we don't have an error but we also don't have our little picture here. So I'm going to go back to our assets and we've created the asset Mario we've created a property called idle and we knew that it worked in in uh, the other draw or the other um, the other thing oh that's what it is we have an underscore G now so in here we're passing it as underscore G um, and that's just so that uh, I continue with the underscores for past in um, parameters so the other thing that I need to do is I don't know why I did this but setting the the uh, set state is a function that we set not a static property so we have to pass in the game state to the get, uh, set state function so what was happening is, is we were never actually setting the state we were just creating a new property called set state and setting it to the game state which is completely wrong so if we come to our game now and we run it we should tick oh DT is not defined we did not uh, pass that along so we come back to our tick and we need to set this as DT here DT for Delta time and that's a billion different things that we did wrong but it's fine all right and here we go we've got a little guy he's rendering to the screen and he's in our game state um, I actually threw temporarily a a console.log just to make sure that we showed that it was rendering um, before so here we are we've got our first state set and the cool thing is is now just by switching which the which state is the, our current state we will render a completely different part of our game to the screen so now that that is done uh, I'll say that we will wrap up today's tutorial or at least for right now um, this tutorial I may do another one in just a little bit but we'll, we'll count this as one tutorial done um, and I will see you in the next video where hopefully we get into uh, you know maybe loading in some tiles and and uh, uh, or, or maybe even just moving a character around the screen we'll see what we end up doing uh, I'm not necessarily going in the exact same order as code and more but we'll get to the same place and once I catch up we will do the same things he does all right I will see you in the next video